the assembly devotees I offer also my humble obeisances unto you. Suniti, my dear sister and friend, who guides me all along the hidden path of devotion in my spiritual life and who also, also really humble guides also the German group in Radha Dasyam, likes it. When different devotees read and share their impressions and feelings to the verses of those beautiful games of Vilapa Kusmanjali and of Radha Raza Sudanidi. And because Suniti, who is a lifelong wanderer and searcher on this wonderful path, encouraging so many devotees, she knows that it is precious that it is important and enriching our reading and sharing when many and when different devotees read and share. So I humbly take the courage and serve my beloved Gurudev and his mate and his maid servant Suniti and support them by reading the verses 108 to one. 198 to 201. And begging your pardon, I only speak out of my uniqueness as you and we all speak and share out of our uniqueness, humble. As Goranga always points out, humble. I don't want to be right. I don't want to speak out of my ego. I'm taking some deep breaths being gentle to myself, not giving pressure to myself and really humble, would only like to serve. I have chosen verse 200 of Radha Raza Sudanidi. Some weeks ago, Goranga wonderfully took us really to a pilgrimage to these four verses. And he guided us through this landscape. He led us to a plateau. Let us sit down and dive in these special mood. Goranga opened a space to inhale this mood of our appreciated Prabhupada Saraswati. It is in Vrindavan, early in the morning time dawn. Perhaps it is a bit cold. We are impressed by the painful cryings out of separation. We full of pity listened during the night. Now the night is nearly over and together with Prabhupada Saraswati, we are wandering to the banks of the dark, calm flowing Yamuna, sitting down at her lovely banks, watching her strong but calm flow only in one direction to the ocean. And from the bottom of our heart, Together with Prabhupada Saraswati, we pray loudly. And this is the first 198. O Radhe, when will I become a guest on the pathways of Rindavan groves, sitting on the bank of the Yamuna, only aspiring? for the service of Rishabhanu's daughter. And indescribable, this is the verse uh, 199, an indescribable reservoir of great nectarian flavors and wonderful pastimes named Radha always dwells in the grooves 
on the bank of the Yamuna. All glories to the Queen of Vrindavan, who is the heart of all the clever girls, who is like love personified, and who is the spotless treasure of Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna, who is himself the essence of an ocean of Rasa. Goranga beautifully showed us and explained these beautiful verses. And on this pilgrimage, in the commentary to this verse 200, I was allowed to find a gem. And this game I would like to share. Ananta Das, in his commentary to this verse 200, points out, Srimati has finished decorating the Tristing Kunj and now simply waits for Krishna's arrival. And this is a very special moment. Srimati is the heart of the girls of cleverness. All these girls are experts in decorating a kunj, a place for meeting the beloved. The colors of the flowers are in beautiful harmony, emphasizing a special mood. The fragrance is infatuating, betörend. Jeweled ornaments are glittering, pearls are shimmering. Some of the maidservants are playing expertly an enchanting raga to raise the mood. Delicious, fresh, juicy, sweet fruits are prepared. The maid servants watched blissfully the expertise of the heart of all clever girls decorating the kunj. Because Sri Rade, she is the ocean of cleverness. The kunj looks beautiful. And at the point, Sri Rada is ready. Nothing more to do. It is perfect. She is ready. Finished all to do's. Now, this precious moment, a moment of an in between. The one thing is finished, and the next didn't start it yet. There is a special space. And this space we also find in mundane life. We can look out for these subtle, filigrain spacious spaces. For example, the dawn, the dawn at evening, the night with their soft, large wings is falling slightly, and the bright day is giving up and vanishes. And in the space between day and night, it is getting bluish, a silky, gentle blue. The blue hour occurs. The noises 
are getting lower. The movements are slowing down. Breathing is getting deeper. The wind calms down. A space of in-between. The activities of the days are done. And this is a precious time only to chant the holy name. What else could be done? Perhaps I'm a bit tired. I've done my duties and it isn't time to sleep. I'm feeling aware, grateful, now, remembering Radha Krishna, offering the fruits of my activities. It seems as if the Creator has interwoven this in-betweens, inviting me to remember, to pray their names, Radha Krishna. When we are searching for this in-betweens, we find them all over. As Uddhava points out in reading the Bhagavad Gita, it is the space between the lines where we can follow the hidden paths of devotion, listen to the ankle bells, getting a wish of this fragrance of this fragrance of love. It is perhaps a space between two breathes. It is also the dawn in the morning and it is revealed in first in the verse 198. Orade. When will I become a guest on the pathway of Rindavan groves, sitting on the banks of the Yamuna aspiring for the service of Rishabhanu's daughter? Sorry? And in the commentary to verse 199, it, it is Ananta Das Babel, she points out, Shri Pat, in his Kinkiri Swarup, sits on the bank of the Yamuna, anxiously hoping for Shri Mati's service. And then it happens. As she sees that Vrindavan is suddenly illuminated by a golden aura. Each day, every morning, we can receive these, these mood, these illuminating of the golden morning light. I only have to sit and receiving it, begging to be a maidservant. All Sri Radhika, she has come to the bank of the Yamuna to meet her beloved. All of Swamini's limbs are playing on the waves of the desire to meet her beloved while she enters the Tristing Kunj. The maidservant follows her inside and sees that she is the very form of a great abundance of indescribable Nectarian flavors. It is as if the formless abundance of Prema Rasa assumes the form of Rishabhanu's princess. So 
So now, Sri Radha is there in the Kunj, finished the beautiful decoration, full of bliss, expecting her beloved. And also, the maid servants can deeply breathe, being aware of this precious moment, because they also to have this minute to watch the beautiful decoration Sri Radha expertly has created and to enjoy how beautiful Sri Radha herself looks awaiting her beloved. The Mandaris are ready to serve, but in this very moment, nothing is to do. Just relishing. And then something dramatically happens. When the appointed time passes and Krishna still did not show up, the ocean of Srimati's anxiety increases. Srimati, the goddess of love, the ocean of cleverness, the ocean of compassion. She becomes anxious. How can that be? She, the goddess of love, becomes anxious herself. I, as human being, become anxious when I'm waiting, but she... Finally, Srimati is unable to remain patient and she pitifully laments, Alas, Hari did not show up in the forest on the appointed time. If I can, cannot serve him, then all my useful beauty is useless. Of whom shall I take shelter now? Now that I've been deceived by my friend's words. This explains Sri Radha's anxiety. She is only eager to serve her beloved. He shall relish her useful beauty. Otherwise, her useful beauty is useless. Alas, of whom shall I take shelter? Srimati is despaired. Sri Krishna Mohan is her only shelter. And now, in this very moment, the maidservant knows, no, now I have to serve. Sri Radhi doesn't ask for this service. She isn't able. She's in, in anxiety, unable to remain patient. She needs support of the maidservant. What is to do? And this is um, this is verse two hundred. The maid servant personally sees how cleverly Srimati came to meet Krishna, and how cleverly she decorated the kunj. When the cuckoos, the bees. The birds, the trees, the wines, and the deer of Rindavan see how pitifully Srimati is separated from her beloved. They all cry along with her, feeling 
the same anguish. Seeing this, the maidservant calls her Vrindavana, Vrindavan Adhikarini, Queen of Vrindavan. And then, suddenly, a bluish aura illuminates the kunch. The maidservant, who suffers along with your Swamini, brushes out of the kunch and sees that Shyamasundra has arrived. Seeing how the fire of Srimati's anguish is extinguished by the ecstatic shower of her blissful meeting with Shyam, the maidservant says, all glories to the indescribable queen of Rindavan. So, perhaps we should take a pause also the here and in between. Thank you, Sudevi. I like how you are connecting the different feelings in the mood of the Dasis and also how you feel, how you can have the space in your life to always remember Radha Mohan, to be in the right mood. And I think this is now a very uh, exciting moment because Swamini has prepared the kunj. She has put all her love in there, all her expectation. And now he became late. Oh, oh, this is the salt, the little piece of salt that will create a mood that will make everything completely different then we would have expected. It's a little bit of salt for Mohan's pleasure because now he has to feel what Swamini is feeling when he comes late. Yes. So I'm very excited to hear what is happening now. <laughs> yes, so it's, it's really dramatically. Srimati is in anxiety. Verse 201. I offer my obeisances unto Hari, who is a very form of deep rasa, who is gladdened by a great festival of amazing pastimes and who wears a beautiful crown of peacock feathers and who rolls at Radha's foot soles. Commentary. When Shyama Sundra arrives at the trysting place, he <laughs> immediately understands that he is too late. So, he is a little afraid. The cause of love is most amazing. Although Srimati made all the creatures of Rindavan cry along with her when she was separated from Krishna, now, 
that Krishna has arrived, she suddenly becomes angry. Man is a culmination of sneha or pranaya. In Ujvala Ninamani, it is described how pranaya and mana are interactive. Although maybe that we want to maybe that we want to clarify a little bit for all who are listening, because I know we have here the highest dashes of the taste of all these, you know, moods and pranay and man. These are very important um, issues to understand. These are feelings of Shemati Radhika. And these feelings is not for her pleasure, but it's actually for Mohan's pleasure, right? When she becomes angry, we could falsely think that this is a lover who is uh, angry because the, the expectations were not met. Oh, my beloved has not come. Now I'm going to crush his ego. No, but this is not the case. Shimante Radhika, she is feeling man. Because she is in pranai, she is so close with Mohan, and then she wants to give him a little bit the spicy taste, how her moods are there also to, to make him uh, relish her uh, little spicy man or anger or jealousy. And that can only happen when the pranai is coming, means they have they have the perspective to to lovingly meet and to be so um close to each other that nothing will break their relationship anyway if somebody would like to um elaborate on this i i am very uh excited to hear because man and pranay is a very uh, interesting and deep subject. And these are not only uh, Sanskrit words to learn in an order that now comes this and then comes that. These are <laughs> feelings that are connected to the heart of the loving uh, Leelas between Radha and Mohan. And also the Mandaris are, you know, very excited to see how they can serve now when this Mohan comes. Because all these jealous, jealous anger expressions of feelings, they are very also, it's not like, oh, yeah, we know this now as well, many as a man. Also, the, the maidservants, they feel the, they feel sometimes troubled also what to do. They are, you know, they feel first of all, Swamini's feelings, but then they feel, how can we serve in this moment? And maybe somebody would like to, elaborate on this because i think it's good because the the next paragraph it is uh, again a little bit more about this explanation and maybe we want to clarify it from the beginning what is man what is pranai and how these feelings are serving in the leela and serving mohan Rade, rade. Sunitichi, like you said already, um, I think f for me, it's always nice to understand in, in my language and in my uh, used to think about feelings. So um, it's not so easy to take these uh, words out of Sanskrit uh, to the heart and, and immediately get a feeling to it, actually. So for me, it always needs a bridge. So I'm thankful to make a bridge that you make a bridge for me um, to understand what, what is happening, actually. So Radharani is very, very near and she has no other wish than to serve his beloved, her beloved. So that means she is reading in the heart 
and in the mind of her beloved what he needs now what spice actually what you said what spice could i take now to make it more delicious to make this rasa even more delicious like a cook who is smelling and uh, he has a special taste of some ingredients like uh, you put some uh, vegetables and then you think oh yes this spice would actually make the taste of this vegetable even more uh, high more and, and and bring it together nicely so it will be a very nice dish so actually the only means for from radharani is to serve her beloved in such a way that he is actually going up trilling like in the madness of love actually and she is serving expertly and that means she has to be in pranaya prana means your life source your life power is actually pranaya means it, it's it's connected then it's like it's like one it's not separated anymore like we uh, want to serve radhika so we have to come actually in this mood to uh, understand what is her heart, what is her wish. So Radharani is expert in this, and she is actually doing this. So if we see it from this perspective, we may understand. And in Chaitanya Charit Amrita, there's also a very nice uh, statement of Radharani in madness, uh, in love for Krishna. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking in the mood of Radha. And he's saying that a curse to that girl who don't give up their brightness, their broadness in the right moment. <laughs> so that actually shows what is actually this service. It's a very subtle, a very fine, and it has to end exactly on the right moment, and it has to be given in the right moment, actually, because this is serving the rasa and we can see how expert it is done by our swamini and we can learn from her how to take these spices in the right moments and make the dish even more delicious actually so let me end here i'm sure others can elaborate on this more nice jai shirade Goranga Sunda, you would like to share? I'm relishing <laughs> your kata. Uh, so, yeah, it's very important to understand these levels of prema. And it's not so complicated, actually. If we understand just basic things about levels of prema, then we can enter deeply in this exchange of emotions and interactions of these levels, which are constantly are working. So after prema, sneha is coming. And this sneha is the level of prema which is more condensed than prema. It means that emotions are more and more intense. And what's going on on that level? The hearts of lover and beloved are completely melting. This is the sneha. And there are two types of sneha. You are mine and I am yours. Without using Sanskrit words. 
This is one type of sneha, you are mine, which Radhika's opposite group with her with their leader they have. And Radhika, she has this another type of sneha. And this type of sneha is you are mine. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm yours and you are mine. Sorry. <clears throat> so this first type of I am yours is representing in Chandra I'm yours. And this type of sneha, melting the heart, is compared with the gi. Gi by itself it's not so tasty. Ghee always needs some spice to add to receive some taste. But another type of sneha, you are mine, which Radhika has, is like a honey. And this honey is naturally madhu sneha. Is naturally sweet. It doesn't have to put any ingredients in this kind of love to be so sweet because emotions and possessiveness behind is so strong that it's compared like a honey, madhu. Now, this sneha is important because from sneha, Sometimes pranaya can appear, or sometimes mana can appear. So this is interaction, interaction of these three levels of intense love. What is pranaya? Most simple thing is to explain is that is more condensed love, more intense love than sneha, when the heart is melting. And in that moment, when the lovers feel this pranaya, they feel not separate between each other. I think that I am you, and you are thinking that you are me. Radhika is thinking, I am Krishna, and Krishna is thinking, I am Radha. So different pastimes are coming on that level of pranay. And the course of love is completely unpredictable. Prema, this is the nature of prema, this is the nature of love, unpredictable. Suddenly, in this moment, when they think I am you and you are me, Change is coming and anger appears in Radhika because she wants to give the Krishna more pleasure than when they are in the mood of pranay. Always new, always new, because she is always diving in the mood of anurag, passionate love. And this passion is helping the lovers to go through these different stages. So, sometimes after this pranay, mana, angerness appears. And sometimes opposite. From sneha, suddenly appears angerness. And then the different types of angerness, and when the problem, like Suniti said, it's like a spice, which brings more pleasure to Krishna, but also to Kinkaris, because they are witnessing this exchange. And they sometimes are in active role to pacify Swamini. 
So different pastimes are going when the mana is present. And when the mana finished, after sneha, suddenly pranaya appears. Lovers are so happy because there is no anger anymore. They are so happy that they can unify, unite again, and suddenly they think, I am you and you are me. So this is an interaction. Sneha is melting the heart. Sometimes anger appears, and after anger, more intense feeling, you are mine, uh, you are me, and I am you. Krishna is thinking, I am Radhika, and Radhika is thinking, I am Krishna. And sometimes, after Sneha, which melting the heart, completely melting the heart, Pranaya appears, and from that condensed love, Mana appears. So it's going like this, interaction. It's a dance. It's a dance. <laughs> yeah. Radhikera Prema Guru. In that way, Radhika is teaching Krishna all the arts of making the love. And yesterday we were reading Kalavati. This is the reason why she is Kalavati. She is teaching Krishna and giving him pleasure. And also kinkaris. Kinkaris are diving in this ocean of rasa between Yuga Lakishore. And everything, why is everything is so nice? Because in all these stages, pure selfish love is present. Without this pure selfish love, all these emotions will be completely material. But because of this pure love, all emotions are present in that love, which are completely pure. Anger is pure. Oneness is pure. Passion is pure. Pacifying each other is pure. Everything is so pure. So it's not so complicated, but if we just put on the simple level, at least for my <laughs> understanding, <laughs> and when we read and we listen the lilas, immediately we can understand, oh, this is pranaya. Oh, this is kama gayatri. Oh, this is sneha. Oh, this is anuraga. Wow. And we will never make rasabas in our understanding and feeling. It's very simple. I think that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is very ex much explaining it in Jayadharma. As I remember, I forgot, but I learned from him actually this and try to simplify it to me. I'm sorry, I took too much time. Radhe, Radhe. Maybe someone, Gurudev, please correct us. Love is everywhere. Gopinath. <coughs> we didn't uh, hear you for such a long time. You have abandoned us. No, actually, <coughs> I was kicked out. So by the mercy of Mahani Swami today, I'm allowed to operate the Zoom and be here. Um, uh, very fortunate. Um, sorry for being absent so long, but uh, yeah, it goes in waves, everything, right? So I was just thinking when, when um, listening to, to Goranga, Goravan and Suniti, how beautiful they are entering Swamini's, trying, trying to understand Swamini's mood. I was thinking, why is she acting this way? You know, everything is favorable. He's here. He arrived at the Kunja, he's there for the Prema Vivarta Vilas, he's ready to unite with her, she has prepared the Kunja for him. But if she would allow him now to enter the Kunja with him, it would be not Parakya, 
right? It would not serve this mood which we are following. And then I was thinking like, she's Bam Madhya, she's by her nature unsubmissive. And that's what we adore and admire at her. We want to see our Swamini dominating this cowherd boy. We don't want her to be an easy prey for him, right? We want him to a little bit shake and zappeln, we say in German, no? Like she lets him little zappeln when he arrives. And um, so Bahambadya, unsubmissive. And I was thinking that why, like we always see she's Karuna Mai, she's so compassionate, no? And why is she not so compassionate to him immediately? Because she's compassionate to us, to the manjaris, in her way, when she is like refusing him or she gets man, then we know our time has come to serve her. Now we have to be involved. We have to pacify her. We have to make him understand. Now you did a mistake. Either you were late, you were lost in the forest, or you were with someone else. Now you have to beg for forgiveness, and he can only beg for forgiveness to whom he has to go to Rupa, he has to go to Tulsi Manjari, he has to fold his hands and ask them for forgiveness. Please, please help me, help me that she cools down. So her nature is there for us. She's actually doing this also for Mohan to make him more eager and intensify the, the Ras, as Guranga was saying to intensify this uh, pranaya, that it comes really to the culmination. But we are so lucky that we tiny sparks are also receiving the mercy when she is in this mood so that we can more eagerly act and swiftly help them. So our purpose, our purpose of our jiva is also fulfilled in that moment. So this was just a small uh, glimpse which came to me. And Gurudev, when she's Baum Madhya, what does this mean exactly, Gurudev? Unfavorable. Unsubmissive. Unsubmissive. Unknowingly, she is unsubmissive. She knows that I have to be sure. I have to be unsubmissive. Why? For the for the Krishna that he need prana and both need prana. Prana is the pastime in between conjugal lover. Lover, beloved become angry. <coughs> the goal is only prana. And the lover has no way without Prana to cool down to her. How Priya will become cool down without Prana? Mm -hmm. Serving, when the lover serves to the Priya ji, then slowly, slowly cool down. And that is Prana. How they are cooling down to each other, that is Prana. So this pastime happening. Kunja pastime happening. Yeah. The more obstacles, the more the lovers want to relax, the more want to please Priyaji. And that, how to, which way to please, that she become again normal. They do everything. That's a prana. That is Leela. Hmm. Where the 
निवृत्त निकुंज नो बडी कैन गो वॉट है राइट भाई एंड दिस हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ द मान टू कूल डाउन द मान प्रीतम इज डूइंग दिस फॉर आर प्रिया एंड वाई शी बिकम मान बिकॉज दिस ललिता रिकमेंड टू डू बिकम एंगर टू प्लीज ललिता सो टू प्लीज ललिता दैट शी विल से दैट प्लीज नाउ यू कूल डाउन मीन्स द लीडर ऑफ द गोपीज she has no other inside angerness is in for <laughs> for <laughs> the she has to so like that that she is a man her, her desire is not to be do this but to satisfied larita she become angry mean mana and this way he give the chance to pritham and to the manjaris to see that past time mm-hmm. radhe 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 gurudev and all my stars go good to know that we have a part of this games and uh, i think what i can feel is that radhika out of love she don't know exactly how to behave sometimes and for this she need uh as or like uh, lalita also to give uh, advice because her love make her also a little blind um and then she need help from lalita or from manjaris i was also thinking by this verse that why is krishna always looking also for others and not stay with the others because they are also very beautiful no like chantravali and and the others where she is in, he is enjoying when he is late for the meeting why he is not staying there so that means after meeting he is searching for something what he not reached in this meeting there must be something special what he only find in radhika otherwise he will not search after meeting he will stay there and there is this speciality in radhika and in radhika's manjaris they also have the same understanding there is something more in radhika's meeting than in all other meetings some speciality is in radhika 
And one part of this speciality is also her man. And the main speciality, what I can feel is that she is really in that mood that you are mine to Krishna. And no other will say this. All others say, I am your. But Radhika say, you are mine. And this is what Krishna makes 100% satisfied and so he cannot be happy or fully satisfied with other meeting so that is the point that he is always searching for more when he was in the meeting with others but after meeting with radhika he will not search And this is because he rolls at Rata's foot soles. <laughs> Very deep meaning of this verse. Yes, because, yes, read, read on. I only, I want to add one sentence that what uh, Gorasunda says is very, very deep also. A nice uh, point for meditation, personal meditation. When we are chanting, how is the speciality of Shimati Radhika in her dasis? That Krishna, he cannot, he cannot stay away from them. Because only in that group, only in that association, he will have the highest form of Mahabhav and the highest uh, experience of, of love. So, Can I just add a little picture before I, I just got mm -hmm. some, some very picture to, to close this again? So actually, like in in some uh, film, you know, some Hollywood film, uh, love story. It begins just with a little contact. Then love is growing. Then love is 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 great, and then it needs a break. Otherwise, if it's just going on, yes, now they love each other for the rest of the time. Then the film is nothing. There is nothing in for the taste so it needs a break it needs to to smash this love to bring it again in some fear you know oh will they come again together or not or how it will end or oh, it needs this dramatic part actually so we can understand that actually it it's it's the same it's going like this it goes up and up and then actually because of their anguish, because of their, they, they need to have each other and then they come again and then they are ready for this meeting. And then pranaya can happen actually. And so, so we can understand that actually this is all needed. It's all serving the rasa just to get again a picture. Sorry, I had to. So, and, and we can all learn from this. All that successful dramas they have a conflict. Without conflict, drama is a flat. There is no waves. Conflict brings waves. That's the point of conflict, especially in loving affairs. So, but it first must be love. Then conflict is making more love more intense. Yes, Radha. and... We can learn if this love would be pure, without ego, it wouldn't um, hurt us so intense, the drama. So if we could get rid of our ego, <laughs> it would be precious. 
zu Drama. So, may I read again? Yes. So I, I would like to repeat the verse. Yes, of course. So it's 201. I offer my obeisances unto Hari, who is the very form of deep rasa, who is gladdened by a great festival of amazing pastimes. And Hari, who wears a beautiful crown of peacock feathers and who rolls at Radha's foot soles. Hari is a very form of deep rasa, commentary. When Shyamasundara arrives at the trysting place, he understands that he is too late. So, Shyamasundra is a little afraid. The cause of love is most amazing. Although Srimati made all the creatures of Vrindavan cry along with her when she was separated from Krishna, now, That, Kri that Krishna has arrived, she suddenly becomes angry. Mana is a culmination of sneha or pranaya. In Ujvala Ninamani, it is described how pranaya and mana are interactive. Quotation. Sneha comes from Pranaya, and thus mana is attained. Sometimes also mana comes from Sneha and culminates into Pranaya. Hence, Pranaya and mana are inter active. Srimati pulls her veil over her head and turns her back on Hari as he enters the kunj. He, Hari, who steals the heart of everyone in the whole world with his Unraveled beauty and some and sweetness is named Hari. Different forms of the Lord are named Hari, but Krishna is so attractive that he, that he even enchants the mind of Lord Vishnu, who also is named Hari. There is no sweetness greater, greater than or equal to that of Krishna. He is the origin of all forms of Vishnu that descend from Vaikuntha. And his sweetness cannot be found in Lord Narayan. That can clearly, can be clearly seen in Lord Narayan's beloved Rama, who is worshipped by all the chaste women, strongly desiring Krishna's sweetness. She gave up all sense gratification, took firm woes, and performed Severe penance. Krishna is the quint essence of sweetness. And there is no other perfection above it. 
He is a jewel mine of all qualities like sweetness. He has given his qualities to all other divine manifestations. In this way, we know all the activities of the divine manifestations. But Radha steals even the heart of Hari. He who steals the heart of everyone in this world. No matter what Krishna tries to please his angry beloved, nothing helps. So he decides to take shelter of the means called nati or offering obeisances. Sri Rupa Goswami writes in Ujjwala Ninamani, the seven means to break the peak of the beloved are appeasement, separation, worship, giving a present, offering obeisances, ignoring, or taking shelter of another mellow. Humbly, Falling at the beloved feet is called Nati. Hari holds the feet of his beloved on his head and humbly prays. O Prima Mai, please forgive me. The maid servant sees how the peacock feather crown of the un universal enchanter rose at Swamini's lotus feet. Aha! What an enchanting beauty! How sweetly transcendence falls at the feet of the pinnacle of love. The maidservant is completely enchanted. The maidservant calls Hari the very form of deep rasa. So Upanishad say raso Vai Sahas. He, the Supreme, is Rasa. And Krishna is again the Rasa Gana Mohana Murti, the form of condensed Rasa. Rasa Raja Shri Krishna is most enchanting when he falls at Radha's lotus feet. This sweetness cannot be relished though unless one accepts the mood of Sri Radha's maidservants. Although Sugar cane is naturally sweet. That sweetness cannot be tasted unless the sweet juice is squeezed out. A toothless baby 
or a toothless old man cannot chew the sweet juice out of the cane. Only a young person with strong teeth can. In the same way, a person who has no love and devotion for Krishna cannot relish his sweetness. An aspirant should therefore have a sincere desire to love Krishna. Sri Radhika can squeeze all the sweet juice out of Krishna with the mill of her pure love. And those who take shelter of her and of her girlfriends and maidservants can also relish that sweetness according to the amount of love they develop. This is the extraordinary greatness of the shelter of Srimati's lotus feet. With his loving cleverness, Hari managed to break Srimati's peak. Seeing her hero sitting at her feet, Srimati starts crying pulls him up and embraces him. In this way, Hari becomes gladdened by a great festival of wonderful love pastimes. The maidservant looks into the kunj through the holes in the vines to witness that ecstatic festival of love. Being grateful to Hari for allowing her to relish that sweet sight, the maidservant offers obeisances unto him, saying, I offer my obeisances unto Hari, who wears a beautiful crown of peacock feathers. Thus ends this beautiful verse, 201. Brother. Thank you very much. So, Devi, for this. And we can see what you already read in Baba's commentary that this squeezing process is so important because Radhika is squeezing Krishna's sweet juice by her love. How she is squeezing in different ways, but in this connection with this lila, mana is the instrument of squeezing all the Krishna's sweetness. Beautiful. So what we should learn? That we have to be squeezed out of Guru with pure love. He will do this squeezing so that all essence of our existence come out. Otherwise, we cannot do it alone, because Krishna cannot do it alone. He is showing, just surrender to my beloved, and her love through her maidservant representative will squeeze you. Wow. 
and mm -hmm. all good qualities will appear. Like in me, Krishna is saying, I don't know my own sweetness, but Radhika, when she is pressing me, squeeze me with her intense emotions, especially man. I like her man more than other emotions. Then I feel so happy when I squeezed, when I'm squeezed by her love. And this Krishna, Manjaris wants to worship. Then he is, after squeezing, he is rolling beside her lotus feet. It just came to me now, so I wanted to share you. Radhe, Radhe, sorry. Then you understand the sneha, how much they are intense thinking for each other. Yes. They are, they are 24 7 living for each other. That is sneha. Mind, nothing is entering to them. That's sneha. After prema, sneha coming. Mm. So, mind is living in the feelings. That is the sneha. And sneha make because of the prana and man, prana. Sneha, you feel how they feel separation of each other and how the Pritam is trying to please Priyaji. And how they start serving to Priyaji. That is the... Parna. That is the pastime. So we always meditate sneha and prana. Yeah. That is the excuse thing for manjaris. And then manjaris feel now is too much. Why not her man is going down? Then she find out this she is not doing. And Lalita said to him to do this. Then they run to Laita and say to please say to Priyaji to come down to the man, to come down from the man. And when Laita said, please, now you can cool down, then she cooled down. She never has anything inside. Yeah. All they are excusing from her. Even let <laughs> that <laughs> without your man, how it will they will excuse it. It will not come out. Wow, thank you, Gurudev. You give the whole picture now. Because I was thinking all the time, is it always that Lalita is the cause that, you know, how to give permission for Swamini's man or to give permission when she should stop? But I think they are all squeezing, you know, the whole situation. And then I, I feel that in the end, Baba says, the maid servants are grateful to Hari for her allowing her to relish that. So it's also, they are also, you know, they are relishing together. It's not only that anyone has any self interest. It seems they are the, the transcendental party somehow. So <laughs> they want. Also, little man, but not very long time. But she's taking a long time because 
ललिता ऑर्डर है अच्छी के नोट डिसोबे ललिता सो गिविंग टाइम फॉर द मंजरी एंड ऑल दासी हाउ मच यू आर इन यू कैन एक्सक्यूज इट so this is difference guru dev in bhavas actually approach to man different from different bhavas sakhi bhavas manjari bhavas is completely different expectations feelings approach so like suniti just said it's not always that lalita is the cause of mana radikas actually lalita is the main leader for creating man in radhika that's your nature <laughs> so we pray we have a one lalita mantra mm. because she is the leader she not make give the chance to us to us mm. that she can help us to to strong my teeth to excuse it she gave chance to us to fallen soul who never tested she is giving mercy and then manjari who is in the kund never tani kunja they can do it sakhis and gopis are not allowed to go to never tani kunja but she is a leader so she is like a radhika you see she always stand near to krishna because no nobody can control without her to krishna she is very strong she is krishna fear for lalita only she has a strong teeth guru dev and yeah. we try to develop our teeth <laughs> yeah yeah laita had a sakhi bhav but at the same time she is merciful to the king kiris and manjari gods to the dasins this there are many feelings mm. but one feeling come i share you you are also right but i don't know my dear sakima or gopiva honestly <laughs> i know only one what <laughs> guru dev teach me how to excuse that rasa we have to be always a sign manjari ka there Guru Dev, Manjari's relish all bhavas of Radhika equally, or some bhavas they relish more, like when she is in Man or when she is in Pranaya. How is it for the Manjari? What Radhika is relishing, Manjari relish. She is a shadow. Mm-hmm. How she feels, she becomes like that. Shadow. Mm-hmm. how the men is acting is they are acting but the, at the same time she is worried also if the pritam will go radhika will more worried to call him back 
And that is a difficult time for me to find it out. <laughs> so why to, to bring a very long way, mm. why not to cool down to my Swami? And then they find out what is the reason of their angerness. Mm. Then they run there to make the switch off CS. Zin may count, Lalita may count, switch. So she is angry. So please switch off. <laughs> it's too much now. It will be difficult for me to find again, Krishna. Please pull down to her. Mm -hmm. She will not disobey you. Then she come and say to the Swami, now she is going. There is one line. Then they leave the place. One is in Ma, this is also. Leave the place. Change the meadow. So leave the place, Miss. Now your freedom is going, then I have difficulty to find out. Mm. Now cool down. Mm. Because you see, switch off first, not anger more, and then she said. Mm. Then she has no way. Then she has to call him, call him. She inside want, but outside because of the fear of Larita, she is holding herself in mind. Because somebody pump out, their angerness is coming. Mm -hmm. Naturally, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to, somebody pump you out. Little angerness is there, and somebody pump out the high angerness. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Out of control. <laughs> and that time, the find also <clears throat> a friend like this who more pump <laughs> to make you angry. <laughs> 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 Your friend will say, yes, yes, it's the right situation, mm -hmm. <laughs> do it. <laughs> they have to you have to teach one time very strongly, okay. Then she says, okay, I'm right, although she's not right. <laughs> This is beautiful. Parna is beautiful. And Man is beautiful. <laughs> Man is beautiful. <laughs> to see the Parna and Sneha, mm -hmm. how they are in love, Sneha, how they are mad for each other, how you will see. Jai Radhe, Jai Jai Sri Radhe.